Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm reviewing the competitive and solo play in Metro Runner, the cyberpunk-themed Euro from Thunderwork Games. And disclaimer that I was provided a review copy of this one. In Metro Runner, one to five players will take very quick turns where you're moving around this little sort of rondellish circle of the city. Whichever space you land on is going to let you take an action, although you can also interact with the district you're in. You'll be picking up odd jobs to do and spending cubes to complete them in the color-matching sector, gaining victory points track advancements, and often ongoing power that'll make jobs easier in the future. And you can also hack the system and stick it to the man by manipulating these tiles to match up patterns on these cards on the top of their decks to gain other bonuses. And like most heroes, you're trying to get the most points before the game ends. So let's discuss five things to know about Metro Runner. So first, my number five point is the solo mode itself. And this one's a bit of a mix for my taste. On the positive side, turns are incredibly fast for the Automa. You just flip up a card. It tells you where these two different trackers move in relation to yourself. And then it gives you a few little actions to do that'll impact what the player has available to them, like cycling some cards or moving things around on the hacking matrix in the middle. And the fact that these turns are quick is very good because your turn is also generally super fast, so if the AI turn dragged, it would be terrible. But on the negative side, it's just a beat-your-own-score mode, which doesn't tend to be my favorite. And also in what I personally find to be a bit of an odd choice, every turn the AI will compare itself to where you are on this notoriety track. And that'll determine which actions it does. And the big one being if you are past it on the notoriety track, they will advance one of the tracks by two instead of by one. And these tracks advancing is the main timer in the game. When somebody passes this line, the game ends. So the solo game actively wants you to always be behind on notoriety unless you want to have way fewer rounds to score. It works fine once you know that's the case and you know not to gain notoriety too quickly, but it feels a little weird compared to the balance of the competitive game. My number four point, which is a pro with some caveats, is the job completion in the game, the main source of victory points. And they'll need different resource cubes to complete. They're going to move you on one of the two tracks to give you upgrades. They'll get you extra little bonuses and often give you ongoing engine building opportunities. And to complete a job, you need to be in the matching colored district. And since your movement is pretty restricted unless you spend more to increase it, this creates a lot of the tactics and strategy of the game as you plan out where you want to be and when you want to be there. Another cool thing is that each game, randomly different colored jobs are more or less important because completing sets of jobs will give you extra victory points at the end. But on the slightly negative side, the effects you can get for engine building pretty much all just, <laughs> to me at least, feel like you get a few more cubes. And it's a little bit easier to get cubes. They do have different effects, but they're not that exciting, so don't come here looking for a major engine building game. And that sort of leads naturally into my number three point, which is unfortunately a full-on con for my taste, and that's the variety in the play of the game. And here's the thing, not very much changes game to game. Yes, you had different sets of jobs, but again, the effects aren't really that different. The board spaces are always the same. The tactical puzzle of movement is interesting, but pretty repetitive. And for me, at least, a big lover of factions and player powers and that kind of thing. The only difference between different players is this little character card, which gives them a power they can use for the hacking puzzle, which is nice, but nothing else in the entire game is affected. Just the hacking is where you have some differentiation between characters. Now, this game is quick and light enough that it's not that big of a deal, but I would love some more variety if they do an expansion or something at some point. My number two point, which is a full on pro for my taste is the hacking puzzle. This is an action you can take when you land on certain spaces and you get to rotate and move and swap the tiles and you're trying to make the green reach the green and later as you level up your tracks you can also reach the blue and the pink for even greater bonuses. And I love a quick spatial puzzle. This is fun. In competitive play the fact that everybody sees it at the same time and has the same cards available really leads the tension of like who's gonna hack it when when it's really obvious that somebody can complete it quickly. But then when somebody hacks they put out cubes on spaces that become free cubes for other players to pick up. So if you hack all the time, you might be helping your competitors. And then in the solo game, hacking gets you cubes you can try to grab before the AI throws them away automatically. So yeah, it's a pretty unique mechanic, a lot of fun. I guess you could play the entire game without ever going to a hacking space, but the benefits are easy enough to get and fun enough to get that I don't see myself ever doing that. Finally, my number one point, which is a full pro for my taste, is the quick movement and the quick actions in the game, and especially the resource management with that. So on your turn, you just move one or two spaces, you jump over any other players, or in the solo mode, any of these little AI tokens, and you do the action of the place you land on. There are ways to take double actions in a turn, but really, your turn is never going to take more than 30 seconds once you know how the game goes. But then what kicks this kind of simplistic rondelle up a notch is that you can spend your cubes that are also being used to complete jobs to get bonus movement. You also get these credits you can use 
use to take extra actions or to teleport to any point on the board. So it's still fast, it's still streamlined, but there are more choices and tactics going on here than you might think. And I've really enjoyed this core movement puzzle and the play of the game with both solo and competitive play. So overall, you might want to check out Metro Runner if you enjoy light Euros, if you think that hacking puzzle looks like fun, if you like Euros that take very quick turns where the solo mode plays speedily. But on the other hand, if you're looking for a meteor experience, if you're looking for a lot of variety, play to play with different faction powers and stuff, or really strong engine building and combos, this might not suit your needs. And if you want to see the game in action, Jason did a preview play of the solo mode back when it was on crowdfunding. You can go watch that on the channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.